Hi, this is Lauren Lachman. I'm coming to you from the Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica. A few days ago, a friend of mine forwarded me a video recorded by Dr. Gabriel Cousins and asked me if I could comment on it. This is my comment. I respect, I've known Gabriel for probably close to 20 years. I respect him very much. We have very different opinions on certain things, including what an optimal diet looks like. And I want to address today where I think he may be missing the boat a little bit. First of all, in the, in the video that Gabriel, that was sent to me, Gabriel talked about two studies. And he was talking about two groups of people that had experimented with living on an essentially all fruit diet and apparently failed. And he kept referring to these as studies. He said, uh, I quote, there are only two actual studies. And then he went on to, to talk about these two communities but there was no study whatsoever. A study is when a scientist actually collects data and corrects for issues that might be affecting that data and then calibrates, you know, tallies everything to see what's going on. There was no study. It was, it's, a, it's a story about a group of people that tried something and didn't succeed. Why they didn't succeed, frankly, I have no idea. I don't know what they were doing. I don't know whether they were eating enough, what they were eating. I don't have any of the details. As far as I know, neither does Gabriel. But I want to be clear that that, what he talked about, does not constitute a study of any kind. In fact, although Gabriel shared his opinions, and it's clear that his opinions are, are strong and, and uh, well-formed, he shared absolutely no facts to support those opinions. He, he did talk about the fact that several other raw food leaders agreed with him. Uh, and he mentioned a, a few people including uh, Brian Clement and uh, Dr. Young and a few other people. Um, he, these people all agree that eating a lot of fruits is not a good idea. Uh, as if, if a lot of people think something is true, that makes it true. And you know, unfortunately, this is a logical problem that many people in our culture today are suffering from. A lot of people will think something's true, and everyone then, th well, that must be the case. You know, it's interesting. My background was in, in university was actually in finance. And one of the things that we learned was called contrarian investing. And in contrarian investing, what you do is you do exactly the opposite of what everybody else is doing. The reason that this frequently works is because, in fact, the majority is often wrong. And there's no, no difference here. The fact that many people believe that fruit is problematic doesn't make it so. Um, you know, I'll point out to you that in the early 1600s, Galileo, now the well-respected scientist who invented the telescope, Galileo, or discovered it, Galileo went to jail in the early 1600s, about 1616, I believe, because he supported Copernicus's, support, Copernicus, Copernicus was his teacher. Copernicus was the first one to say that the sun and all the other planets did not revolve around the earth, but that in fact the earth and the other planets were revolving around the sun. Well, this is contrary to the idea that the church had been teaching people that the earth was the center of the universe. And because Galileo supported Copernicus's ideas and was willing to say so publicly, he was imprisoned. Now the majority clearly said sun revolves around the earth. Did that make it the truth? Absolutely not. It's no different here. There are two primary arguments that people use to, to talk about why we shouldn't eat too much fruit. The first one is simply that fruit contains too much sugar. Let me point out to you that the only thing the body must have 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year 366 and leap years, is sugar. Okay. Now we can eat steak and potatoes and make sugar or we can consume fruit which contains both glucose and fructose and many other important minor sugars perfectly ready to use in their, in their form that we need them right there which is a lot more efficient than having the body have to do a bunch of work and our bodies like every other species on the planet are governed by something called the law of efficiency. The law of efficiency says the body always wants to do what's going to be most efficient, the most benefit for the least amount of effort. Well, it's far more efficient, given that we need sugar all the time, to eat something that contains it 
rather than to eat something where the body then has to make it. So are we getting too much sugar? Well, no, I don't think so. Now, is there an impact of eating fruit on blood sugar? Well, yes, but minimally. Let's look at some facts. First of all, most people are familiar with the glycemic index. Maybe you've heard of that. But the glycemic index does not talk about how much impact something has on our blood sugar. What the glycemic index is actually saying is how quickly a substance gives up its carbohydrates. So here's an example. First of all, on the glycemic index scale, the, the benchmark is white bread, which has a glycemic index of 100. Okay? Now, watermelon has a glycemic index of 72, which makes it pretty high. Anything over 70 is considered high on the glycemic index chart. So watermelon is a high glycemic index food. And many people will tell you, if you've got blood sugar issues, stay away from watermelon because watermelon has a high glycemic index. But the glycemic index is only telling us how quickly watermelon gives up its carbohydrates, not how much impact it has on your blood sugar. Well, what talks about that? Well, that's something called the glycemic load. The glycemic load chart is very different because on the glycemic load chart, anything from 1 to 9 is considered low, anything from 10 to 19 is considered medium, and anything from 20 and above is considered high, has a high impact. So watermelon has a high glycemic index, but what's its glycemic load? Well, the glycemic load of watermelon is about four, which means it's very low. It has very little impact on your blood sugar. The reason that's true is because watermelon is A, mostly water, and B, contains plenty of soluble fiber, and that fiber slows down the absorption of sugar into your bloodstream. So even though watermelon tastes very sweet, and it's delicious, and it has a high glycemic index, when you eat it, it has almost no impact on your blood sugar. Now let me put this in, into perspective for you by talking about some other things that people commonly eat and what their glycemic loads look like. Uh, first of all, cornflakes, Kellogg's cornflakes, glycemic load 33. Okay, now, it's not sweet, it's just corn, but all starches are broken down to sugar and in the absence of any real fiber it has a massive impact on your blood sugar. Okay, this is one of the reasons people feel good when they eat cereal because their blood sugar gets spiked. Remember, cornflakes 33, watermelon 4, all right? Fresh corn 20, high. Kidney beans 17, okay, not high, but on the high side of the medium. Uh, minestrone soup 18, that's not sweet, 18. Uh, lentils and cauliflower curry 31. Cooked barley, between 19 and 21. Buckwheat, between 15 and 19. Millet, 26. Carrots, 6. Now, are there some fruits that are high? Well, fresh fruit is rarely going to have a high glycemic load. The highest that I've come across is bananas, which can register as high as 15, between about 12 and 15. So they're in the medium range. There's no, there are no fresh fruits that have a high glycemic load. Now, raisins... Dried fruits, which nobody should be consuming very much of because you take all the water away, the most important thing, and what happens? Well, the sugar gets concentrated. The glycemic load of raisins is about 28. The glycemic load of dried dates, the way most people eat dates, 42. This is something you do not want to be consuming a lot of because it will have an impact on your blood sugar. And too many bananas can have an impact as well. But if we look at the rest of the fruits, right? So we've got all these other things ranging from 20 to 35 to and so forth. Fruits, watermelon 4, apples between 4 and 6, grapes between 6 and 9, pineapple, very sweet, right? 8, pears 3 to 4, mangoes and 8. There are very, very few fruits that are not considered low glycemic load foods for the reason I just mentioned. Therefore, I mean, what this is telling us is a scientific measure of how much impact these substances have on our blood sugar. Nothing has the impact on the blood sugar of the things I mentioned, no fruit, of the, the complex carbohydrates and even the grains and beans that people are eating have more of an impact on your blood sugar than most fruit does. Okay, So it's complete and utter nonsense. Now the second argument is that eating too much fruit makes your body acidic. 
Well, here's what's true. First of all, if you eat fruit on top of other foods, you're going to wind up with some problems, including an acidic system. You're going to wind up with indigestion. You're going to wind up with food rotting in your stomach because fruit takes, on average, probably 20 to 25 minutes. Some fruits as long as 45, heavy things like bananas. Others may, may digest in your belly in 15 or 20 minutes. But, you know, in under an hour, fruit is ready to pass out of the stomach into the duodenum. But if you're eating fruit as dessert on top of other food, that other food might take two, three, even four hours to digest in your stomach. What that means is that fruit will sit there and begin to ferment, and that causes problems. But if you take somebody who's eating only fruit, no, they're not eating it on top of anything else, they're eating mono fruit meals by themselves, but their body's not clean yet. What happens? Well, when people eat fruit, it requires very little of the body's energy to digest and process relative to almost everything else they eat. And it also contains more water, as long as you were not talking about things like bananas and dates, it contains more water than almost anything else people ever eat. What does that mean? It means that the body is able to begin cleansing itself much more rapidly, much more vigorously than most people's bodies ever cleanse unless they're water-only fasting. So if we get the body clean with water-only fasting, what happens? We eat fruit, we have no problems at all, there's no acidity in the body because the body is consuming something that has no trouble dealing with. It has low impact on the blood sugar, it's not creating a problem, fruit isn't acid forming. Um, everything else we eat is acid forming. When we eat a lot of fruit and the body's not clean yet, the body is able to begin cleansing and that's where it appears to be acid forming. This is something that these esteemed gentlemen who are dismissing fruit as a healthy substance don't seem to understand. Now there's a little bit more. Consider the fact that several years back they found a man frozen in the ice in Switzerland. I think he was about 5,000 years old and the contents of his stomach, when they looked at his stomach, thought him out first, essentially only fruit, berries, fruit, uh, a fruit-based diet. Johns Hopkins University, a uh, very prestigious university in Maryland, the great state of Maryland, um, they studied the teeth of every known hominid, all the predecessors to man. What do they find? They find these weren't uh, hunter-gatherers who were living on meat, that every single hominid that's been found to date, according to Johns Hopkins University, ate primarily fruit. And this shouldn't surprise us because we share over 99% of our genetic material, our DNA, with our closest primate relatives. What do our closest primate relatives do to get their food? Well, they get over 90% of their calories from fruit every single day. How could it be that our, our bodies would need something completely different from that when in fact our digestive systems are almost completely identical to theirs. The key is to understand and remember that we need to first of all get the body as clean and efficient as possible. And once we've done that, we thrive on a fruit-based diet. I've been doing it now for over 20 years. I haven't been sick a single day. My body works better than it did when I was 18 years old. All the problems I had then have gone away. I was very sick when I was younger. Today, I'm, I'm as healthy as can be. I've had over 100 students, mostly in their 20s. Not one has ever been able to keep up with me. Not one's ever been able to run faster. Not one, you know, it's, I could go on and on. What you want to understand is that there are people out there that have a particular belief system, a pre-existing filter about what's true, and they're not really willing to reconsider. I came into this completely open because I had no pre-existing beliefs, simply looking for something to make me healthy, and I found it. And if you want to be as healthy as possible, you may want to not, not be so quick to accept what these experts are telling you. Use your common sense, look around at what happens in nature, and you'll see as primates, we are fruit eaters.